Welcome back, Harold Asmer, West Gillswood. Boo's Butcher Block Restoration. This is what we got, and this is what we turned it into. You stick around for a couple of minutes. We'll show you all the steps we took to get this bar. Now, Boo's Butcher Blocks have been around for a very long time. This one is uh, solid maple. It's extremely heavy. Well, it took two of us to work this thing around, and it only had two legs when it came to us, so it's in rough condition. This thing had been used for a long time by a family who's in the restaurant chicken meat cutting business. So they wanted to maintain it and keep it with them. So they brought it to me. That's what we do. So, of course, you can pop the other two legs out. Those are going to be gone. We're going to have to make legs. But let's deal with the top first, see if we can figure this out. Now, you can see that blue painter's tape we put on there. That covers up that booze block um, branding that you saw right at the beginning of this video. We wanted to protect that and leave that in place. Now, first thing we did was we addressed this big split that was in here. Now, the thing wasn't coming apart. But this big split needed to be addressed, and so that's what we did. So we went ahead and routed and chiseled and chopped and did what we need to do to clear that out. And we discovered that this crack is pretty substantial. So we went all the way through one side, all the way across the top, right down that seam, and then uh, short ways on the other end of it. And one of the tricks we had to do here was make sure that we got... Uh, our replacement maple boards had to go in with the end grain up. That's critical on a chopping block. You want to make sure you have the end grain up. It closes up easier in the end. And here you can see we managed to get our groove cut. Worked out pretty well. Boy, this thing is a beast though to work around. And again, here you go. Now we filled it in. We had hard maple. So we cut the groove to match the parts that we had, the maple parts that we had, and we made sure the gap was completely filled because as straight as we could do it, there was going to be some gaps in there. So we made sure everything got filled up with the end grain up. Now in this shot, you can see on the left side of that, this is sitting flat on our workbench, and you can see it's way up high on one side now. This is the top. And to deal with the top, we created this sled that we could run our router across. Here it's sitting on top of the um, butcher block itself, but this thing is meant to sit down on the workbench, and we ran the router back and forth and back and forth over this thing. It takes a bit of patience, it takes that jig, and it takes a really good broom. In the end, you wind up with this. It's kind of carved and weird, but it's mostly flat. And it comes down to a power planer and a hand plane and lots of sanding to smooth everything out. And as you can see here, we, uh, <laughs> we have a good broom, fortunately, because, boy, this creates a ton of dust. So, yeah, there you go. That was some work. And you can see here now, just visually, you can spot that that's uh, much more level now. It was way off before when we got it. Ah, here's a good look at the uh, end grain on our insert. And we also mimicked. Now, we didn't go with the uh, dovetail on it. We just went with a tongue and groove. But we kept it as close to looking original as we could. We got a food safe, um, I think it was the orange oil that we used on this butcher block material that we used. Because we know it's a butcher block. It's how it's going to be used. And we soaked this thing up really well. And while this was happening, we decided to go ahead and make the legs, but we wanted to get this part done first because we knew this was going to be our more technically difficult thing to do. And it came up beautiful. We were real happy with it. <laughs> we were also happy to be done lifting it for a little while. Here you go, eight quarter maple. That means it's two inches thick. And there's enough boards there. There's eight boards, so that's four legs. So there's glue on every other joint here, so we're making all our legs at one time, if that makes any sense to you. And here we turned our tenons. Nice to have a lathe, and nice to know how to use it. 
And a woman who owns this block also wanted a shelf in the bottom, a shelf that did not exist before. So we used some maple, we carved it down to size, we decided how we'd like it to look. I think she sent us a picture, said, I'd like something like this. I said, well, okay. And that's how we tend to do things, and that's how we make money in the shop, is people send us pictures and say, hey, can you make us one of these? And we just go ahead and make them. And that's what we do. We haven't done a booze block thing ever since then. You know, but this is how we make money at West Hills Wood. People show up, say, can you do this? And we say, probably, I guess so. Okay, come back Tuesday. So now we routed some grooves down the center of each of our posts to make them have a little character. We mounted the shelf down there where we thought was a reasonable height. Painted it her color, the woman's choice on the color. She wanted it at 34 inches. Here we got Dan in there to just give you some idea of scale. And then look how this thing came out. Now most of this was original looking. We did clean up the whole thing as you could tell. And we're quite pleased with it. And again, this is how West Hills Wood stays in business. We just have people bring us stuff and we just make them. Or we fix them or whatever they need. And that's how we keep our hobby shop in business. This is the first for us with the booze block. We managed to save that little tag. Recall that this is what it looked like when we got it. Now this is upside down, of course. And then this is what it looks like when it left here. We've seen this in the woman's house She's very pleased with it, so we're very pleased with it. Harold Osmer, West Hills Wood. Be sure to like, subscribe, thumbs up, all that business. Send beer.